while we were still sinners, Christ was doing the work that he needed to do so that we can be reconciled back to God so that things can get better. So, fellas, we as husbands, we need to get that understanding that we have to do the things that are needed to be done so that our marriages can get better even when we think things are unfair. Welcome to the live Q&A for the Extraordinary Husband. I'm Joe with The Color of Marriage, and I want to welcome you to this live Q&A for the Extraordinary Husband. All right, so today we're going to be answering the question, why do I have to give in all the time? Why can't my wife do it sometimes? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, that's something that we feel like is unfair. And we, we have to always be the one who make things right. And, and sometimes we don't want to have to do that. But fellas, um, that's what God wants us to do. God says that we're supposed to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And guess what Christ did? He was the one that gave in all the time. And what do I mean? What do I mean by give in? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us to have this time in today's Extraordinary Husband Live Q&A. Father, I ask you, Lord, that you lead me, guide me, and direct me in the way that we should go, Father. Uh, I pray that you would help me to have the words to speak the words that you want me to speak, Lord, and uh, I really appreciate what you um, are having me to talk about today because we as husbands, we don't want to do this. We feel like it's unfair. We feel like it's something that we shouldn't do. But we, when we consider what Christ did for us, we'll have different thoughts about this. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first thing I want to do is, is um, talk about a comment that was just made. Um, thank you, Tim. It says apologies aren't easy at all, but they're necessary. And our pride many times keeps us from making apologies. I know that it did for me when I was early on in my marriage. And sometimes it's still there, but we have to move pride aside, thinking about only ourselves. But we also have to be thinking about what God says is the right thing to do. But let's talk about what does it mean What does it mean to give in? What does it mean to give in? Um, so we can have a better understanding of what does it mean to give in? All right, that means to yield or surrender. It means to stop resisting or fighting against something. It means to make things right even when we don't want to make things right. It means to do what's right even when we feel like it's unfair. See, because we are supposed to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And if we take Christ's example, he, 
he did what he was supposed to do even when he felt like it was unfair. And if you don't believe me, we're going to get to a passage of scripture here in, in, in a little while that talks about how Christ did what he didn't want to do, even when it was very, very difficult to do. You know, we as husbands, we have a responsibility to be the leaders and leaders hold things together. Uh, my brother Mike, uh, I was texting him earlier today and he says that, you know, we as husbands are the glue that holds the marriage together. And I think many of us miss that job description as we were reading through the responsibilities of being a husband. I, I believe we missed that job description. Uh, uh, the job description of holding the marriage together, keeping the marriage from falling apart, even when we think our wives are being unfair to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it is difficult. I, I know it is. And, and we ask ourselves, why can't our wives do it? I mean, and, and if you're honest enough, you probably would agree with me that our wives try to keep the marriage together more than we try to keep it together. They apologize more. They give in more and so forth and so on. And we let our pride get in the way of us doing the things to reconcile the differences that our, we have with our wives and we need to stop letting that happen. And the reason why this happens is because we're not taking our concerns to our head, who is Christ, who is God. We need to take our concerns to God and say, God, you know what? I think this is very unfair. I don't want to have to do this. God, you know what she did. You know what she said. Why do I have to be the one to make things right when she is the one that did something that was wrong? Why do I have to be the one responsible for making things right in the marriage? Why do I have to give in? Why do I have to yield? Why do I have to surrender? Why do I have to make peace? Why do I have to do these things when it's not my fault many times? But sometimes it is my fault, Lord. And, and then you ask yourself, when it is your fault, are you willing to give in then? And, and if we're honest with ourselves, fellas, we don't even want to give in then. We don't want to give in then, even when it's our fault. We wait for our wives to do the reconciling when in reality it's our responsibility to reconcile the marriage because that's what Christ did and, and God tells us that we're supposed to love our wives as Christ loved the church and I think we missed that one we missed the fact that Christ was the one who reconciled us to him even while we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ loved, for, loved us. He did what he needed to do while we were still against us. Okay? So, we have to think about that. Romans uh, 5, 8 is the scripture that I'm referring to. It says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, I talked about this a little bit in one of the other videos, but I, I'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, deeper today. 
while we were still sinning, while we were still sinners, Christ was doing the work that he needed to do so that we can be reconciled back to God so that things can get better. So, fellas, we as husbands, we need to get that understanding that we have to do the things that are needed to be done so that our marriages can get better even when we think things are unfair but we got to do it the right way we got to we we have to go to god and ask god to help us with what needs to be done so that we can make things right in our marriage and i'm telling you christ did this way before we even thought about doing it and we're supposed to be examples of Christ in our marriages. Is this easy to do? Uh, I, I said it earlier, it's not easy to do it all. But God definitely expects us to do it. To win his wife over, Christ did not let pride keep him from taking the necessary steps to make this happen. He focused on completing the task, even though he knew it would cost him his life. And sometimes, fellas, it may not cost you your life. It may cost you your pride. It may cost you to look foolish. It may cost you to, you know, it may cause you to look weak in your wife's eyes. It may cause you to be the one that says, I'm sorry, or to be the one that says, we need to make this thing right, even when you was done wrong. We all did Christ wrong with us without sinning. And so we have to make things right in our marriages. So in essence, what am I saying here, fellas? What I'm saying is you have to do whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that your marriage works. You need to do whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that your marriage lasts even when it makes you look foolish for sure even when it makes you looks like you are a fool when it makes you look like you're a fool that why am i doing this when she's the one that was wrong why am I doing this when I didn't do anything wrong? Why am I doing this when I know what actually happened? Well, you're doing it because God says this is what husbands are supposed to do. Am I supposed am, am I saying that you're supposed to let your wife run over you? Am I saying that you're supposed to let your wife do whatever she wants to do and let her get old, get get away with doing whatever she wants to do in the marriage no matter what? I'm not saying that. Christ doesn't let us get get away with whatever you know we want to get get away with. He he holds us accountable. And the same thing, our wives are supposed to be held accountable, but the problem is the way that we hold our wives accountable is not the way that God wants us to hold them accountable. If our wives are doing things that we believe is not right, we need to ask God, how do we resolve that? Now, I always say that you need to be very careful. So if you're a single guy 
that's watching this video, this is for you. But for men who are already married, I mean, it's for you as well. But the fact of the matter is you have to work out what you already have agreed to, what you have already committed to. So going back to what I was going to say is this is why you have to be careful who you get married to. That's why you need to ask God, God, is this the person who I who I should marry? And you have to look at the, the, the individual person. That's why God tells us not to be yoked with non-believers. Don't be unequally yoked with non-believers because you're going to have a difficult time with a wife who is not a believer. It all depends. You can have a, one who's very nice and super nice, but there's going to come a time when, you know, she's going to want to do her thing and you're going to want to do her do something different and she's not going to want to yield and you're going to have to see what you're going to need to do about that. That's why it's better to have a wife who is of the same mindset that you are. You, It's not saying that it's going to be easier. Well, it will be easier, but it's not going to be as hard. So what I'm saying is still going to be difficult. Really, that's really what I'm saying. It's still going to be difficult when you have a wife who loves the Lord because we're all sinful creatures. We still have that defect that was passed down to us from Adam, which is the propensity to do what we want to do, to yield to our fleshly desires. We still all have that. You have it, your wife has it, but we have the Holy Spirit that balances that and helps us to yield more to God than to our fleshly desires. That's why God says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of your flesh that's why we have the holy spirit to help us to do what god wants us to do so i'm not saying that your wife should walk over you i'm not saying you should be a doormat i'm not saying you cave in and give your wife anything and everything that she wants but what i'm saying is you have to be the one that gives in during the times of difficulties of your marriage so that your marriage can last. You have to be the one who does the troubleshooting. You have to be the one who is responsible for making sure that none of the difficulties that you and your wife have in your marriage is going to break the marriage down. We're responsible for that, fellas. Rather, we want to be responsible for that or not. We are responsible. Sometimes our wives get on our nerves. Sometimes our wives say things that just touch a nerve that just drives us crazy and make us say, you know what, I, I, I can't take it, I can't take this enough, no more. I'm done with this, but we can't do that. We have to go to our father and ask him to help us to work through this. And I'm telling you, fellas, I've done this more times than not, and God has helped me. God will help you when you go to him. You got to go to God and ask him to help you to work through these difficulties that you're going through with your wife so that your marriage can last. Otherwise, you're going to want to give up. You're going to want to give in and you're going to want to get out. And that's not what God wants us to do. What if Christ did that? When it was time for him to do what he needed to do to reconcile us to, to the Father. What if he did that? What if he didn't want to give in? What if he didn't want, want to give up? What if he wanted to get out? Let's look at it 
a passage of scripture that I told you that we were going to look at about what Christ did, how Christ surrendered to not what he wanted, but to what God wanted so that we can become what we needed to be reconciled to God. And fellas, we need to be doing the same thing with our wives. I'm not saying that we, we need to, again, I, I just want to make this perfectly clear. I'm not saying that we need to allow our wives to be foolish and do crazy things and walk all over us and so forth and so on. We have to be wise. We have to do what we need to do, but we have to have good strategies and good tactics that we use so that things can get better. When we see problems in our marriage, we have to, again, we got to take them to God and say, God, how do I handle this? Help me to work through this. Because if you don't, you're going to give up. You're going to give in and you're going to want to give out, get out. You're going to want to give up. You're not going to want to give in. You're going to want to get out. I don't want you to have to go to that point because our feelings and emotions can get us there real easy. So let me read that scripture that I was telling you about, about how Christ had to do the difficult thing so that we can be where we are at today. He had to surrender. Let's look at Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 36. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. See, the first thing that God did, well, he is God. But the first thing that Jesus did, and this is the example he set for us, he went to talk to the Father. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. So again, I see you, the example here is he prayed and then as he was going to the place of prayer, he took some support with him. And fellas, we got to have support. We can't do this all on our own. Okay? We can't do this on our own. We need support. We need a group of men behind us that's going to help us to move forward when we need to move forward and step back when we need to step back. We need a support system. We can't do this by ourselves. We need to know that we're not in this all by ourselves. We need to have a group of men that's helping us. That's why I have the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass. That's why we have this extraordinary community here in Facebook. We need each other. That's what Jesus knew that. He took Peter, James, and John with him as, a, as support. As you see going on, that they was not the support that, that, he, that they should have been but he, they were a sense of comfort, okay? All right, so he was greatly distressed. And, 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 and the comment here says, we must keep our emotions in check. Yes, we, we need to do that, but we can't do that with God. God and we're going to see how we can do that better. This is what Jesus did. He was greatly distressed. We, we You know, the last video I talked about being overwhelmed. This was overwhelmed to the thousandth degree to the to the to infinity i would say he was greatly distressed he knew what he was about to go through and he said to them my soul is very sorrowful how many times you are very sorrowful because of some things that's going on in your marriage how many times are you feeling like woe is me i don't want to go through this anymore i don't want to deal with this anymore Look what Jesus did. He says, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. And he asks Peter, James, and John. He says, 
remain here and watch. And he went a little bit further. He fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. This is what Jesus said. If, if, if there's another way, Father, for this to be done, then let it be done. But here's what he said next. And he says, Abba Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Did y'all hear that? Yet not what I will, but what you will. In this passage of scripture, we see the greatest example of what it means it looks like to surrender. Now, and, and I also pray that you can see this just as plain and simple as I do. Jesus made a deliberate, conscious decision to do what he knew his father, God, wanted him to do. He made this decision in spite of the intense grief and anguish that he had to contend with in order to make the right choice. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. This is what it truly means to surrender to what, to, to do what Jesus said and did. This is what it means to truly submit, surrender, to do what Jesus said and did. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. And the question I have for you is, are you ready to say this when it comes to obeying God? Are you willing to say, not what I will, but what you will? And your struggle to say, not what I will, but what you will, more than likely will not be as intense as it was for Jesus. You might think it is, but it's not. But nevertheless, I know there's going to be times, and it might be here right now for some of you, in which you will have to overcome an eternal struggle that will per persuade you to either, to either fear or fight against what God is asking you to do or not to do. You know, I remember um, when, that, when, when that time came for me and I had to make a decision, but you know, uh, in, in my marriage, um, and I called for support and that's what you need. I prayed and I called for support, okay? Fellas, that's what you're going to need to do. You, you, you're going to need to pray and you're going to need to call for support. Whatever the situation is, you need to understand that God is there for you. He can help you. He says all things are possible. That's what Jesus said. You got to remember that all things are possible as well. And the reason why we don't go to God because we don't feel like we can make it through this situation we don't feel like that we can overcome this feeling that we have. We want to give, get away from this bad feeling. We want to get to the good feeling. So we don't want to give in. We want to give up and we, we want to get out. I don't want to deal with this no more. I don't want to deal with this no more. I'm not going to deal with this no more. I, I can't stand it. I don't, want to, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. That's what we say. What if God did? What if Jesus did that? we would be doomed, but he didn't do it. He set the example. He set the example, and we should be grateful for the strength that Jesus had. Yes, he was God, no doubt he was God, but however, the same power that was in him is in us now. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can carry you through these points of dis discouragement, this these points of fear, the, these points of, I don't want to do it. The Holy Spirit can carry you through it, but you have to make a deliberate choice to do it. You can't just always want to give up. You know, think about 
the most difficult problem you had in your life that was outside of your marriage? It was probably a job. It was probably something that you had to fix on the car. Probably something that you had to do in life that was real difficult. Think about how you came through that situation. Think about how you thought it was impossible, but you did what you needed to do because you had a reason to do it. You had a reason to do it. And you, what is your reason to stay in your marriage when you don't want to stay in your marriage because of the difficulties that you're going through because you want to honor God with your marriage and you made a commitment, you made a vow, you made a covenant with God that you would do what you need to do. And then you also got to realize that other people are watching you and they're going to go by your example. And if you give up and you don't give in, give in to fixing the situation and you get out, what do you think your kids are going to want to do? What do you think the people that surround you are going to want to do? They're going to follow your example. Well, he did it. When he got to this point, I think then this is the way to do it. But when you don't do that, that means you don't get out and you give in and you don't give up. Then they're going to say, well, he did it. So there must be a way. And that's why you need to see more examples of men working through the difficulties of their marriage so that you can see that it's possible. All right, so I hope y'all understand what I said today in today's um, Extraordinary Husband Life. Uh, I hope you understand what I said in today's video. I hope you will take the example that Jesus set for us and use it in your marriage and understand that if he can do what he did and we all we should know everything that he did he was he was nailed to a cross he was beaten he had all kind of other things done to him so that we could be reconciled to the father so I want you to do those things that you need to do so that your marriage can be reconciled, even if your wife was at fault. You'll, you'll see that God will honor that. He will. Let's go ahead and pray out. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, for allowing us to have this time in today's uh, Extraordinary Husband live q and I pray that the, that the words that were spoken were heard and that the husbands will gain the strength that they need from you to not give up and in, in, in leave their marriages, Lord. Help us all, Father. We all are weak. We all are weak. We all ask the question, why do I have to give in? Why can't she do it sometimes? And the thing is, our wife, our wives more than likely do it more than we know that they do. But we have to be the one who do what we need to do in order for our marriages to last. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so if y'all have some questions that you want me to answer, put them in the comment. You can text me, 678 218 nine nine five five you can email me joe robinson at the color of marriage.com dm me get the questions to me i want to answer them i want god to give me the answers so that i can help you to get past the difficulties that you're going through and listen i know a lot of us have this difficulty that i just talked about all right y'all y'all take care have a good rest of the day be safe and do what God tells you. Bye-bye.